Today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. My idea for this show was to invite guests and get the conversation started, to take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. And we encourage our listeners to look within themselves to take decisive action to make a positive difference. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers. And today we are talking uh, with my good friend here, Mr. Clifford Ratliff. We are discussing Blacks in the military. What are we defending is the title of today's show. And a brief description is America's continued obsession with suppressing the voting rights of Blacks in this country raises specific concerns for Blacks who have served as well as those currently serving in the United States military. Clifford Ratliff is a part of the Indianapolis jazz legacy, growing up with the likes of Wes Montgomery, Freddie Hubbard, J.J. Johnson, and many, many more. After attending Crispus Attucks High School, I'm going to say that again. After attending Crispus Attucks High School, he studied under the auspices of jazz educator David Baker at Indiana University. As a young man, he played with many of the jazz greats along the famous Indiana Avenue. In 1966, Clifford enlisted in the Air Force, touring the world in the Air Force Band and participating in numerous USO tours. Upon his return to Indy in 1970, he continued playing with jazz masters like Ike Cole, brother of Nat King Cole, Jimmy Coe, Pookie Johnson, Russell Webster, Melvin Ryan, Les Taylor, Larry Leggett, and others. Serving as the band leader of the Indie Jazz Company, he has participated in several shows, including the Indianapolis critically acclaimed production of Dream Girls and the music and the music Martin and Me at the Indianapolis Museum of Art. Clifford and the Indie Jazz Company was featured in 2009 Indie Jazz Festival. Please help me welcome my special guest today, Mr. Clifford Ratliff. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So today, it's interesting because this show was inspired by a Facebook post that Clifford uh, put up, uh, I don't know, a month ago, About maybe. Month ago. And, uh, I, you know, I, I can't recall all the details of the post, but it started with, I'm really pissed off. And basically, the, the crux of the post was letting everybody know that he is a United States military veteran. And the question that he posed or the concern that he posed was, you know, along the lines of what are we, what are we fighting for? And, and, and this, this whole idea in America, mo most of the time, one of the main sort of selling points or, or pieces of rhetoric that, that we uh, share or military in the military freely is the idea of defending the rights and the right to vote in this country. And um, the fact that he was saying, well, you know, I, again, we will get into the crux of that conversation here in just a minute. But I, I just wanted to set this up and, and let you know that his post inspired me to do this show today. And so before we get going, I would like to take a moment and share with you um, the history or a little bit of the history of Blacks in the United States Army. And this information comes to us from the U.S. Army website um, entitled African Americans in the U.S. Army. And so it, it chronicles somewhat of a timeline of the involvement. And I think that it stands to reason that a lot of Blacks in America are, and, and a lot of the history that we were taught was that, you know, the Army was segregated and so on and so forth. And largely, um, a lot of the history that that is casually sort of discussed suggests that Blacks and, and their major involvement and being allowed in the military occurred like in, you know, World War II or something like that. But I want to share with you the actual history 
from the United States Army itself. Throughout America's history, from the Battle of Lexington to the Battle of Fallujah, Black soldiers have honorably answered the call to duty, serving with great valor and distinction in America's armed forces. Each February, the U.S. Army celebrates and pays tribute to Black soldiers and recognizes the important contributions they have made in past wars and are, and are continuing to make today in overseas contingency operations. This timeline spans the history of Black soldiers from the American Revolution to present day operations. So in 1770, in, on March 5th, 1770, Crispus Attucks and several other patriots from Boston protested the British curbing of civil liberties in their Massachusetts colony. During a scuffle with British soldiers, Attucks and several others were shot and killed. Although independence had not yet officially been declared, Many consider Crispus Attucks the first American casualty of the Revolutionary War. Sidebar, I mentioned to you when I repeated it that Clifford attended Crispus Attucks High School in Indianapolis, Indiana. And so now you know who Crispus Attucks is and the significance as he is widely regarded as the very first martyr, the first death, the first person killed. Uh, at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. The Boston Massacre greatly helped to foster colonist spirit of independence from Great Britain. More than 5,000 Blacks, both slaves and free, would later take up the cause and fight for America's independence. Unfortunately, freedom for most of them would have to wait. 1775 to 1783, the American Revolution. Thousands of black soldiers, both slaves as well as free, from all 13 colonies fought in the Continental Army during America's war for independence from Great Britain. Many also served in state militias. Black soldiers served in every major battle of the war, mostly in integrated units. A notable exception was America's first all black unit, the 1st Rhode Island Regiment. The regiment defeated three assaults by the British during the Battle of Rhode Island in 1778 and later participated in the victory at Yorktown in 1781. About 20% of the tens of thousands of Blacks who were served, who served were, uh, ooh, I don't even know what this word, they were freed from slavery during the time that they served. So they, they were allowed to be free while they were in service for the military. 1775, Black Minutemen. Black Minutemen fought at Lexington and Concord as early as April 1775. But in May of the same year, the Committee for Safety of the Massachusetts Legislature presented a resolution. It read, resolved, that it is the opinion of this committee, as the contest now between Great Britain and the colonies respects the liberties and privileges of the latter, which the colonies are determined to maintain, that the admission of any persons as soldiers into the army now raising, but only such as are freemen, will be inconsistent with the principles that are to be supported and reflect dishonor on the colony, and that no slaves be admitted into this army upon any consideration whatsoever. So the history sort of continues. Black soldiers were involved in the War of 1812. Black soldiers served in both integrated regiments as well as in all black regiments. Many black soldiers served with courage and distinction, both on land and at sea. Many others worked as laborers, constructing fortifications and supplying the army with food, material and munitions. Again, the case goes on. Um, after the Civil War, settlers moved westward in increasing numbers. When fighting, broke, when fighting broke out with the Indians, the army was often called in to quell the uprisings. In 1866, Congress authorized the formation of regiments of black soldiers, the 9th and 10th Cavalry Regiments, and the 24th, 25th, 
38th, 39th, and 40th, and 41st Infantry Regiments to deploy in the West to fight the Indians. The, ind the Infantry Regiments were also were, were later consolidated into the 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments. Now, uh, conveniently, I sort of bypassed the most important involvement, I believe, which is in the Civil War. When Union troops invaded Confederate states, thousands of Black slaves flocked to Union camps for a chance to fight and a chance for freedom. Many of these men were unofficially allowed to enlist in the Union Army. After President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, January 1st, 1863, Black soldiers were officially allowed to participate in the war. I just wanted to go back a way so that we can truly understand that it appears that in every conflict, every war that has been fought by America, clearly uh, Blacks were involved in those wars and in service of the United States of America. Now, oftentimes what we look at is Blacks in, um, and, and, and most soldiers, when asked what it is that, that you are, uh, why are you fighting for, you know, the United States and for America? What, what are you fighting for? Most often, and Clifford, you can correct me if I'm wrong, most often the very first thing that gets cited is we're defending the right to vote. Is that... That's part of it. Part of it. Okay, well, right. let us in on, on the other aspects of what, what, what they say. I've never been in the military, so I don't... Well, you know, most of it is to fight for freedom, period. Okay. You know, uh, to write and to have a suit of happiness and everything, something we don't have. Mm -hmm. It might seem like we have, but we don't have. Mm -hmm. And um, this country has seemed like it's turned its back on our Black servicemen for some reason. And now since they got this new voting thing going, it's really, it's just went beyond everything. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think another black person should shed another drop of blood for this country, unless they have the right, the full right to vote and everything in this country. Because we've lost a lot of black people in this country, you know, Starting back, as far as I know of, like the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. you know, World War, Spanish American War, the World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War, and now you got the uh, Gulf War. Black soldiers have participated, have died, and um, they're still talking about voting. You know, in the 21st century, mm -hmm. it seemed like things would change before now because one big lie told by a one big idiot, which is Donald Trump. And um, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, there you have it, folks. We are, this is the conversation we are having today. We're talking about Blacks and the military. And what are what are we defending? That's the topic of today's show, and we're glad that you're tuning in with my special guest, Mr. Clifford Ratliff, who also, I might add, I, and you heard in the bio, is a jazz musician, and uh, but he conveniently left his trumpet at home today, which is probably for the better. Um, so <laughs> I had to do it. I know you did. <laughs> you can't help yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love this guy. We go back a long way and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of that as we go. But thank you for tuning in today. And uh, again, I'm excited about this show because I believe there's a lot, uh, a lot of questions and actually a lot more points of, of interest regarding um, Blacks who, who step forward and join in military service for the United States, uh, because this voting thing is not a news flash. In fact, this voting issue has been uh, there since the beginning. Uh, so here we are with it again. So it never really got resolved, clearly, because if it did, 
this matter would be past us in 1965, 19, you know, during the Voting right. Rights Act. So that would be old business, but it's not. And it's been attacked even, you know, all along. Uh, so again, the marginalization of, of Black people and particularly Black servicemen, I think, is, 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 um, is, is bad news. So anyway, we'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires with my guest, Mr. Clifford Ratliff, and we'll be back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We're back, and today we're talking about blacks and the military. And what are we defending with my guest, Mr. Clifford Ratliff? Um, so, so, Cliff, you had mentioned just a moment ago when I was asking you, what is, you know, about the sort of the sales pitch, the, the, you know, our, our, our motto, what that, 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 that shores up the military and we're fighting for, you said freedom and, and uh, the pursuit of happiness in America and all these sorts of things. So I want to take those one step at a time as we come back to this voting thing, because, okay, just right out of the gate. So black people are, 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 are shedding blood and fighting for this country, uh, for freedom. H- has that ever really it never been, really happened? It, <laughs> right. No. So, so black people are fighting for freedoms that they really don't have. We don't get to life. use. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? To it don't you? make sense at all. Okay. So you also then so you said pursuit of happiness, which sort of gets tagged onto that. Black people serving in the military are fighting for the pursuit of happiness of who? Evidently, it's for them. <laughs> them who? It's the white American. You know, and um, it don't seem like it has boiled down to us yet at all, period. Um, like, like we said earlier, from the Revolutionary War until now, we still got the same problem. Nothing really changed. Nothing but the dates. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Well, p- some people argue, but there, you know, there have been advances and, and so on and so forth. And um, you know, that that things aren't things have improved, you know, uh, uh, again. And uh so what what do you say about that? 
Well, things have improved a great deal. But let's take, for instance, the things we're going through now with the um, previous president. The things he has done and he has not paid for any of his stuff yet. But if it was Barack Obama had did just one-fifth what Donald Trump had done, he'd have been gone. He'd have been uh, ostracized and he's probably been taken off his earth because I could just hear him now. You see what happened when we elect a black person. Mm-hmm. But for the whole eight years, he was squeaky clean. Donald Trump, four years and complete idiot. Mm-hmm. But nothing ever happened to him. Wow. Incredible. Yeah, it is. It is something, man, uh, because, you know, you wonder, well, America's been very good at broken promises throughout its entire history. Probably the, the folks that could could articulate that better than anyone else are probably the the Native Americans, the indigenous people. Um, every treaty, every promise been, every, broken. been broken over and over. But arguably, you know, 40 acres and a mule never occurred either. Do you, you know what I mean? So it's like over and over, you, you got voting rights. I, I remember a comment and I, it's one of the most vile things I'd ever heard, which was Mitch McConnell. I think somebody had asked him and the topic was maybe something about reparations. And his response was reparations. Well, we had Barack Obama as the president. He's an idiot too, so. Suggesting that that was the great reparations. I mean, we gave you that sort of thing. And I thought, man, that's, that's, that's pretty nasty. He didn't give us anything. Right. We went out and fought for it. You know, for Barack. And many other uh, congressmen and senators, you know, black senators and everything. We fought for them. We got them elected. Mr. McConnell didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But the idea that that's like some sort of strange consolation prize, like, you know, we gave you that, you know, (laughs) aren't you happy? Aren't you satisfied yet? Didn't, wasn't that enough? It's, it's, it's like a bone being thrown at some point where you're just like, really? And the fact that it's, that it's used or leveraged like that when we're talking about, you know, again, Barack Obama did serve two terms uh, and is regarded as one of the top presidents on that list. Donald Trump has pretty much secured the the low end spot of that. list. never got past 30%. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so what do you, so what do you say? So you were talking about, okay, so the voting thing, which has always been challenged. And there are all so many mechanisms that are used in that, uh, you know, the gerrymandering thing going on as far as districts and strange configurations on maps. If you look at how they've mapped out these districts, it could be like some wild, you know, snaky sort of thing as opposed to a block or a county or an actual area. It's, it, it's cherry picked. It's like, it's the spotted thing that is there just designed to to frame up um uh, a stronghold position Mm -hmm. at least for the republican party clearly the republicans have really mastered this is this new form of the gerrymandering thing and taking it to a whole new level uh which really at the end of the day creates an a, a misrepresentation of different districts and uh it's designed to Almost your vote. Yeah, bulletproof. So you it doesn't matter what you do. Right. Um, as far as the population or as far as black or people of color, um, you know, it's almost impossible to win. And this is these are the other parts. Mm-hmm. This is and this is all connected to the voting thing. So it's not like this is separate. No, no, no. You got these districts and these are voting blocks, right? You know what I mean? These are the things that put people in office and uh, keep people in office. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's not just simply the, you know, pulling the lever and, and the, the simplicity of just uh, the vote itself. What are you voting for? And, you know, and they're even narrowing that. So it really becomes, you know, it, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. And I, I uh, so your statement on this and your thing was that you don't believe that a a a black person in the service should participate in what way i mean in combat i mean black soldiers should not spill another drop of blood if we can't vote or their people can't vote then they shouldn't spill their blood mm. period wow well that's interesting um and it's strong. And I remember when you when you put that post out on Facebook, and you called me, it was like, man, I, I read it. I was just like, man, this is this is something. And and it's happening right now. I mean, it 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 has everything to do with the uh, filibuster stuff going on in you know, in the Senate. It has everything to do with uh, uh, being able to negate any issues of liberty and strip other liberties and freedoms from people of color and sort of uh, hijacking this entire process. I, I forgot how many uh, pieces of legislation that had gone through the House of Representatives. I mean, it could be hundreds that just don't even get heard. The Senate is not even allowing it to, to hit the floor for a vote. No, he won't bring it up, period. Yeah. And the strange thing is, is that now a very narrow margin, but the House and the Senate are both controlled, allegedly, by the Democrats, yet it's still almost impossible to get anything done. It's still That's a strong because of the filibuster, which was bought in during slavery to keep slaves from voting. That's why one of the reasons especially a lot of black folks want to get rid of the filibuster because you can't get any work done in Congress, period. Mm. So what do you think? I mean, what do you think that the filibuster will, will see its day or that there will be, is there some maneuver around it? Again, I'm not, I'm not as up on that, but what do you, what's your thought? I mean, well, as long as you, okay. Like in the Senate, there's, if there's 50 Republicans, Fifty Democrat, the vice president voting to make fifty one, so that makes you majority. Well, depends on the party. And the filibuster. If one Republican says no, they're not voting for it. It just knocks you out completely. Hmm. You know, one Republican or one Democrat. One Republican. Okay. Okay. I mean, no, excuse me, one Democrat. Say like the party in, in power now is, is the Democrat. Mm -hmm. But say like Joe Manchin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say Joe Manchin. Let's right. just say Joe Manchin. Yeah. Not That's like what it is. <laughs> Joe Manchin. Uh, he and Kristen Hillebrand. Uh, 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 Cinnabrand, whatever her name is. <laughs> um, without their votes, nothing can be passed, nothing can, can move, period. Mm -hmm. it's just it's just there and um which is crazy and i don't think joe manchin really know he, well he knows but he act like he don't know what the filibuster was all about and when it came about and why it came about mm -hmm. but if he took any consideration for the reason that it came about he should, it should be a no brainer and say, and go ahead and vote with the rest of the Democrats, mm -hmm. but he will not do it. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's creating, uh, you know, a heck of a stalemate. And, um, uh, you know, again, I hope they're able to resolve that matter sometime soon because it's, it's really problematic right now because nothing's able to move. And, um, so anywho, but we are coming up on the next break and, um, so we are talking about blacks and the military and what are we defending is the title of today's show with my guest, Mr. Clifford Ratliff. 
and this is Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers, and we'll be back in just a minute. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. And today, our show topic is Blacks and the Military. And what are we defending? Um, with my guest, Clifford Ratliff. So, so Clifford, I'm very curious. That statement that you made regarding the fact that you don't believe uh, that Blacks, with, uh, with the, the idea of, of it being questionable or challenged that Blacks' uh, voting rights that Blacks should not serve in combat any any further until that matter is resolved or just? Until that matter is resolved, right. Okay, okay. So what have, what sort of feedback have you received from other folks uh, that you, in making a statement like that? I'm just curious, other folks that you may know who are military folks, what other sort of perspectives, as you have shared that, what sort of feedback have you received, whether it be on Facebook or just in casual conversation? Because I know you feel very strongly about it. So, you know, I'd just be curious to hear what kind of feedback you've gotten from others. A lot of my veteran friends, they all think the same thing. And they all will, if, if time was reversed back to the evening of the Vietnam War, we just say, they probably wouldn't want to go fight then, period. Mm -hmm. because um, it's sad when you sit sit down and you think about all the friends and things you have lost in just that war. I'm not talking about all the rest of them, just that war. Mm -hmm. And it's totally ridiculous now that you, they bring up stuff where you can't vote or they're trying to make it hard for you to vote, make it hard for your people to vote, which is, uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy. It's not right. Mm -hmm. And you got soldiers out there now fighting somewhere in around the world, shedding their blood. And when they come back again, they won't be able to vote. Depends on where they're going. You know, it's, it's but that if, to me, if one person can't vote, then nobody can vote. You know, it don't matter. So unless all can vote and have, you know, and have a chance at it, then it, 
we shouldn't shed our blood no more. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like I was told when I was uh, stationed in uh, Utapau, Thailand, I went down to the village to have some clothes made. And then uh, an Indian, East Indian asked me, why are you serving in that war? Why are you fighting in that war? And I really didn't have an answer except if we didn't, we go to jail. So the Indian said, go to jail. Don't fight, don't do it. And it really didn't hit me until about a couple hours later on. And I said, man, this, this guy's for real. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna shed our blood and we can't get anything out of it, don't go. That's the reason why I come up with that statement that we shouldn't shed another drop of blood, you know, if, until things are right here in America for us. So are you saying so so even that that statement from that Indian gentleman, is it that he could see the injustice that oh, he, blacks were were, were oh, facing? Knew. They all know. People around the world, they all know. Seem like the American people here are the ones that don't know. Mm -hmm. They act like they don't know. Mm -hmm. But um abroad, everybody knows what's going on in America. Mm -hmm. And so that's a pretty wise statement for him to say, hey, look, you know. Go go to jail. Mm. At least you come out alive. Right, right. And maintain some level of dignity, too, right. because, I mean, the idea of fighting for something, again, you said it earlier, and I think that, that you know, again, this is, this, is, this is what strikes me is we're talking about, again, freedom and pursuit of happiness and all this sort of stuff. But that freedom thing is, I, again, my question, freedom, what, your freedom? Or freedom for who? <laughs> you yeah. said the other folks. Yeah. Then that make it, that make any damn sense, man. I mean, it's like, Basically, really? that's what it is. Hmm. Well, you know, I come from a military family too. And uh I was I was chatting with my dad before the show today. And, you know, it was just one of those things where I was I was sort of just, you know, running this and I told him what the, the story was and what your statement was. And he just sat there and and uh, you know, I'm again sort of just just hashing it out, getting my getting my chops together for the conversation today because I'm not a military guy. But I know for me that uh, growing up the military thing. Oh man, I used to jump inside the tanks and and uh, and the you know the the law you know light anti tank weapon, the little law canisters and stuff. I was fascinated with the weaponry. I was fascinated with the thing, just like any young kid, you know, playing soldiers and stuff like that. So these things were fascinating to me. Um, from a technology and also a play, play, play fascinating. Nothing fascinating with me about actually shooting someone without having a real good reason. I can name some reasons that would make me put a bullet in somebody <laughs> if push come to shove, but it's definitely push come to shove, but it never really made a lot of sense to me that people sign up and actually serve, you know, and, and, and go I, because I've never heard any reason other than you're protecting and defending, you know, the America and, and, protecting our freedom and all that. And I'm going, you're protecting our freedom, but you got to go to a thousand, you know, thousands of miles away. And you're trying to tell me you're protecting my freedom here. And I'm going, but they ain't here. It, it never, again, it's just a logic issue for me that was like defending what? And then, so did you ever know, or did, has anyone ever just sort of squared up from leadership and said, this is really why we're going to, has the, has the, the, the reason or the rationalization been something that was a convincing argument and an honest one that you go, yeah, I'd go, I'd go fight for that. But no, I've never seen that at all, period. You just do but it because it's an order. It's, it's an order. But, you know, just like joining the military, if I had to join, I would have been drafted. And if I've drafted, 
I probably wouldn't be here today because they they were shipping guys out left and right straight to Vietnam, which was a death penalty in itself mm. for a lot of guys. So um, I don't know. But but it, wouldn't it, you want a real good reason when you're going to pull up a weapon on somebody and go, look, man. Well, when that time comes, you don't ask questions. You just pull your weapon. And no, but, I, but I want to know before I, you know what I mean, when I step in and, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, that's, I understand what you're saying, but until you're in that position. Oh, yeah. No, I understand yeah. kill or be killed. If somebody's shooting at me, then, yeah, I mean, that, that's reason enough for me to want right. to want to do something. But I'm just saying the whole idea that we're on this campaign to go do something to somebody for some reason. I just am saying I, I kind of like to know the reason. Otherwise, I'm out here and I don't know why. Uh, I know I'm in somebody's backyard. It makes sense that they're shooting at me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes sense that, you know, they are protecting their space. But what are we doing here? What What are we here to prove? What are we fighting for? You, you know what I mean? Well, you know, just like uh, Muhammad Ali. They wanted him to go to service. He said, uh, those people over there never done a thing to me. Mm -hmm. So why should I go over there and hurt them? That was his whole logic, which is should have been everybody's logic. That's you think about the it. same train of thought that I'm on. Right. I mean, it's like I really mean, just give me a, give me a reason, a compelling reason for me to want to risk my life, right, yeah. and and take the life of someone else. I mean, well, our government will always go on to tell you, well, you know, you sacrifice sacrifice your life for your country. Blah blah this blah blah that's that. It's romantic, but, but you know that, that, that you know it's, it's, it's not a for real thing. You know, deep down inside, you know it's not a for real thing. But you just do it, right? You just go and do it. Well, oftentimes too, what you wind up hearing is is a uh, and and history. You know, in history now, you know some of these issues kind of come out, and you start to realize this is like agendas about resources and oil and industry stuff business deals that you know are, are capturing these it sounds a lot like colonization the the whole idea of colonization which is you know the roman empire mentality where we're just going to take over we're going to go in and take these resources and we're making money on it and all this, but it's like, oh no, only a handful of people are making money on it. In other words, you're going to do the bidding of a select few that are making money hand over fist. You ain't cut into that deal at all. In fact, you come, you're, you're marched in as proud, you know, soldiers and be a part of this thing and all this national pride and all this sort of you know, build up. But what's always occurred to me is the follow through part. It's seeing people that come back after those experiences, PTSD, mentally are, are out. They say they've seen stuff that you, you, that you can't even bear repeating. They've been exposed to many things, um, been wounded, lost buddies that were standing right next to them a second ago. I mean, all kind of traumas. Um, and and are struggling to get, you know, uh, health care with the VA. I very rarely have run across somebody who had really great things to say about the the aftercare part. Mm -hmm. If they weren't homeless or drunks or addicts or just ate up, you know what I mean, in some sort of way. So the follow through didn't go with the big drum roll and the fancy uniform that happens at the beginning. <laughs> it was after the fact that I'm going. I don't know if that's a good exchange. If I can say anything about the VA now mm -hmm. compared to what it was back in the 70s, after I got out, it's made a 100% change. So it's improved oh, significantly. Man. Okay. Proved, proved greatly. Okay. And um, when I first went in and to VA here in Indianapolis, when you go in, look like you're walking into a, a mortuary because everybody's sitting around waiting to die. You know, it just look crazy as hell to you. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so as time went on by, things got to be better and better. Mm -hmm. And I know it's better because uh, the way they uh, treated me when I was in their care, mm -hmm. you know, well, I think it's great now. That's awesome. Yeah, that's I think great. It's great now. Well, Co that's compared wonderful. to what it used to be. Yeah, because I just uh, only thing I know is just you know cats that were having trouble getting you know return phone calls or yeah. getting service at all, and I was like, really? They should be the front of the line. These people put their life out here and are and are largely struggling and messed up as a result of their service during that time. And so again, I just think that they need to be honored properly and again you know uh, they haven't been and right. that's disheartening because i again i have relatives and stuff who who were you know in the military and you know addicts and all kind of had struggles man real problems they were fine before they went in there f into the service oh, yeah. when they came back it wasn't nothing quite right you know what i mean it was it's just like my oldest brother when he went in he went in the early 60s okay he was in Vietnam. Matter of fact, he did two extra tours to keep myself and my other brother out of Vietnam because at that time we couldn't, they couldn't send two brothers in. Okay. Same war zone. So um, when he died, he took a lot of stuff with him because he didn't want to talk about any of it, period. And he had something against the military. He didn't do anything to hurt the military, but he didn't want the military to have anything to do with him as far as his burial or anything. Something went on that we never could get it out of him. Mm -hmm. You know, but other than that, of course, he went for his country as well. The same thing we all did, you know, we went in there for. Mm -hmm. but it seems like now it's all disintegrating right in front of your eyes so uh, I don't know man it's something else well we we are going to take another break right now so uh, you are listening to Bill Myers Inspires with my guest Clifford Ratliff and today we're talking about blacks and the military and uh, we will be back in just a moment Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives. From our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. Here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. Welcome back. Uh, you're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers. And um, it's it's very interesting <clears throat> that um, I, I want to be clear. Um, I've had plenty of family that have served proudly in the military, and and those folk who have served in the military, uh, my my congratulations and my hats off to you. Uh, so I don't want to say anything or to give you some impression that I um, 
have a disrespectful uh, perspective as it relates to your service uh, or the service of those who have served. I'm just clearly explaining to you why I would not serve and would not have opted in because it did not make sense to me uh, and for me. So, uh, but again, to those who have served, you know, thank you for your service. Uh, but I do think there's a compelling point that you raised, Clifford, about the idea of, of, of if the voting rights and people are, are not, uh, Blacks are unable to vote, or even one Black is, uh, is denied the right to vote, that it, it goes for all of us. Yeah, yeah, that they sh you should not uh, participate in combat services, period. Uh, period. Very strong point. Um, so I see that there was a, there is a note here, and I'm trying to, give me just a second, folks, I apologize. I want to try to honor this because someone has placed a message into the chat here. And I am going to read it, uh, if you'll bear with me. So service members, this, this uh, note just came in. Uh, service members, um, have also joined for economic reasons, pay, education, and dependent benefits. I think most Blacks join today, join without realizing the historical aspect of discrimination towards Blacks in the military. Uh, uh, I did, says this individual, uh, who is uh, Mr. Morris. I don't get, I don't see the first name, but Mr. Morris, uh, or I'm assuming Mr. Morris. The discrimination experienced by Black veterans returning from World War II should have been a wake-up call, but it was hidden agenda by some. Most were not even authorized to utilize their GI Bill benefits to obtain small business loans and obtain housing. When a service member joins, regardless of his or her uh, uh, MOS, they can be placed in harm's way. Uh, it does not necessarily have to be combat. I served over 20 years in the United States Marine Corps. However, I would not encourage any of my children to join the military simply because of disrespected action of our political leaders. And there you have it, Clifford. That, with it. Very much Whole along the same it. line of, of thinking that you are. And thank you so much for reaching out and sharing that comment. Um, it, it means a lot. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm glad that you are listening to the show and that you are interested in tuning in. And uh, secondarily, I think that it's important that your voices are able to be heard. And so I am, again, I'm not a military person, but uh, I wanna make sure that these points are raised because this is the society in which we live and the, the issue of voting rights is something that I do share <laughs> as a citizen of the United States. Right. Uh, you know, and so um, thank you so much for chiming in there and, and adding to the to this conversation. And so I want to comment. Yeah, it, it was. And, and thank you for that testimony. It was wonderful. So before we get out of here, because we only have a minute and a half left, so I'm going to do some speed talking. So this character here, Clifford Ratliff, uh, I was a trumpet player at the very beginning, and many of you have heard that. And so Clifford right here was my trumpet teacher, my very first and only trumpet teacher in the seventh grade. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a wonderful trumpet teacher and all that. And um, I want to thank him publicly, but I also want to announce <laughs> that's why I play the bass. <laughs> anyway, um, I love this guy. I love this guy. I love this guy. And um, so I just needed to lighten up the mood here because he's been giggling at me through this whole thing. He asked me if I was biracial and the thing. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's really pretty naughty, but uh, we love him anyway. So thank you for tuning in. And I'm grateful that, um, that Clifford has been able to share that very really heartfelt and powerful statement. And so I do thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me here. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank, and thank you guys for tuning in to Bill Myers's. <laughs> I can't even do it. Thank you. We'll see you here next week. Man, you, you're too much. Don't blame man. Me, this man. is your last time here, bro. Let me tell you. <laughs> thank, you <guys. laughs> thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for spending your afternoon right here with us at Bill Myers Inspires. Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. 
remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word, and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week.